Welcome to Process to Profitability, a podcast all about the tools and strategies you need to serve your clients and grow your small business, hosted by me, Samantha Mabe of Lemon in the Sea. Join me as I chat with creative entrepreneurs and small business owners about how they built and grew their businesses and how you can do the same in a way that fits you. Let's get started. You're listening to episode 147 of Process to Profitability. LinkedIn is growing in popularity in the online entrepreneurial space because it can make a huge impact in your business, but it still isn't as understood as the other social media platforms. Aliyah joins me today to talk about using LinkedIn for business, including how it compares to other platforms, what you need to start generating leads and creating a sales funnel, and building genuine relationships with potential clients. She also shares the common mistakes that she sees business owners making when using LinkedIn to grow their business and generate sales. Aliyah Khatib is a LinkedIn and marketing consultant for high-achieving online coaches and service providers passionate about transforming lives and making impact. She spent over 12 years in the business and marketing world and now applies that expertise to help her clients create tailored action plans and systems so they can make giant strides forward from the simplest steps. She's with them every step of the way because nothing excites her more than seeing their businesses flow with clients that light them up. Make sure you check out her beginner's guide to get started on LinkedIn in the show notes and connect with her on Instagram and LinkedIn if you enjoyed this episode. Hi, Aaliyah. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you for having me as a guest on your podcast. Super excited for our conversation. I am too. And I'd love it if you could give us a little bit of your business journey. So tell us where you're located and how you got started in your business. Perfect. Uh, So two years ago, I was actually starting a career as a personal trainer and I wanted to start from scratch. But then um, I saw this mastermind on how to open your own digital marketing agency. And I've studied marketing all my life, but I never thought I had the courage to do it on my own. But then I saw the support group as a mastermind. I was very intrigued. So two years ago, I signed up. I paid $3,000 on a call and got hooked on this mastermind. And thank God I did. I never regretted it because now I have a um, completely free, freedom-located business. I run my business online from anywhere and anytime. I'm currently living in Barcelona. I really relocated there. And I get to serve my clients, meet amazing people and jump on podcasts like this. And it's been such an an amazing journey. And I can't wait for what else I have installed in my business journey. So yeah, that's how I started. (laughs) All right. So how did you get started using LinkedIn specifically, which is what we're going to be talking about today? Yes, perfect. Excellent question. So when I was getting trained in my mastermind, I was working on running ads for my clients. But also there was a whole section about LinkedIn marketing, like how to do lead generation on that. So when I was doing the training and seeing the costs between LinkedIn lead generation and Facebook ads, I'm like, it's so easy to get in front of my ideal clients and generate leads for my clients. So I started doing it for my own business to get more clients. And the more I worked in it and more I got into in depth, I realized not a lot of people were covering that because, you know, LinkedIn is not a sexy platform. It's the least talked about platform (laughs) in in marketing. And um, like, you know what? This could be interesting. This could be my competitive advantage. And honestly, I just loved how easy it is. It was super smooth. I wasn't wasting time on Facebook groups and chatting and creating content. Like when I started my journey, I was never creating content. I only started started a year ago. So because it was successful for my own business, uh, I started focusing on that as a driver to attract clients that have their clients on LinkedIn. So it's like a, it's like the same kind of journey. So yeah, and I'm, in, and I'm glad I did because it's honestly, it's just now picking up again. Like this is like now the revival of LinkedIn. So I'm excited to be part of that. Yeah, I'm excited to talk about it today. I have a few clients who have used it very successfully for their businesses, but I agree that it's the least talked about. It's kind of the least utilized, especially in the creative entrepreneur space. And I think that's because it's we feel like it's pretty buttoned up and for kind of professional corporate networking. But I would love it if you could tell us really who benefits from using LinkedIn for their businesses. 
Okay, excellent question. So to me, any business owner that is selling a service or a product to another business should be using LinkedIn because it's the biggest B2B platform, right? It also works B2C, but if we're like you, you create websites, right? So you work with um, other business owners that need a website. So you should be using LinkedIn. If I'm a, if a marketing consultant, I need to get other business owners to be using it. If I am a, if I'm a health coach and I want to create corporate well-being programs, of course, I need to be contacting HR. So it's basically business to business, but also you could a health coach could say, I want to work with busy, uh, ambitious professionals that don't have time uh, to go to the gym, but they need someone to train them uh, at their office, for example, or lawyers, so they can contact them directly as B2C by building, of course, finding them and building a relationship, right? So it's really any business owner that is selling to another business professional or to other business owners. That makes a lot of sense because most businesses, most business owners are going to be on LinkedIn and have some kind of presence there more than they might on other social platforms, which seem to be a little bit more of a kind of personal use or it's a mixed use a lot of times on places like Instagram. Yes, like that's what I tell uh, a lot of people. Like I know it's not a sexy platform and it's not supposed to be. Like the way LinkedIn hides content, like it's on purpose. When we're on Instagram, we're using it during a break. Like we're socializing with our friends, seeing cat videos, you know, it's like seeing these new reels and entertaining ourselves. So when we get approached by another business, it gets, it's interrupted. They're interrupting our break. Versus the mindset when you're on LinkedIn and you're there to find clients or you want to post about your business or see what the competition is doing or the industry news and somebody approaches you, you're in a different mindset. It's meant for business. LinkedIn is a business networking platform. So the the mindset also helps. Like busy entrepreneurs don't have time to be scrolling on Instagram all day, right? They're busy trying to get clients from there. So they're not going to be going and scrolling and consuming. We do it. But it's not strategic in, in, in a sense. But it's, it's good to be doing both. So uh, we will talk about LinkedIn for sure. But I personally do both. And I also encourage my clients to do both. There's, there's different ways to know how to use them and, and, and make them work together. All right. So we just mentioned it a little bit. But how else is LinkedIn similar or different from other platforms that people might have more experience using? So, yeah, the main difference I was at, like I was mentioning, like, Facebook and Instagram and TikTok, they are social media networks. It's meant for socializing. While LinkedIn, the main purpose of why it was created, it's for business networking. It's meant for business opportunity. It's like the Google for businesses. So everyone that had a job or has a business, everyone creates their presence, but they're proud to have a business. So it's like the biggest directory. So that's, for me, the number one difference between them. And that's what sets them apart. So it's so much easier to find someone. Like if I want to find you, Samantha, I'll be like, website, website designers in Washington, two years in business with two employees. I can easily find you and everybody's in the same category versus trying to find that on Facebook groups or on Instagram it becomes much, much difficult. The similarity is that you can use both to create content, nurture relationships, and do lead generation on both. That's like right. the only difference, the only similarity I see. <laughs> so I feel like a lot of people, if they are going to try LinkedIn, approach it just like they do other platforms. They post the same sorts of things. They share things the same way they might on Instagram or Facebook Do you think we should be posting differently or different types of content in order to make a bigger impact on LinkedIn? That's a very good question. One concept I want to cover because this will reflect Mm -hmm. on this one. There is two ways of doing lead generation or like, like the concept of inbound and outbound. When we create content, we wait for clients to come to us. We're creating content so people follow us and they start coming into our inbox or following our content so we can get sales inquiries. Versus on LinkedIn. On LinkedIn, we're not there to collect followers. We're actively doing outbound, connecting with website designers, for example. And there, 
it's not a sexy platform. Like I said, it's not a it's not a visual platform. When you're connecting with people on LinkedIn, you're literally getting in their inbox and having a conversation, right? Because one, it's meant for that. Two, people are busy, right? Busy business owners are busy. They're not there to be consuming content. They want to get right to the point. Like, hey, okay, you're a website designer. What is it that you need? And then you're like, okay, hey, I, I'd love to give you an audit about your website. Like we're having conversations. So um, I would focus more. That's how I use these two platforms. I focus on LinkedIn to do lead generation for my business. And I use Instagram to create this beautiful, sexy content and jumping on lives and creating all that videos and whatever you're creating and repurposing some of that content onto LinkedIn just to nurture our leads. But you should be actively doing lead generation on LinkedIn because that's its sole purpose. It's, it's meant literally for that, to create business opportunities. Some, a lot of clients ask me, like, what kind of po- content to post, et cetera, et cetera. What matters is what type of content resonates with your ideal clients, right? So on LinkedIn, you need to first connect with them so they can see your content. And on Instagram, you're creating that content to attract leads. So it's, it's also really trial and error. Some content pieces on Instagram work well, some don't pick up on uh, LinkedIn and vice versa. Sometimes short text on LinkedIn picks up while that doesn't apply on Instagram. People want reels now, right? It's like now Instagram is like, hey guys, we're a video sharing app. So <laughs> that's also, also changing. So Yes, that's really helpful to think about using LinkedIn to create leads, you are going out to connect with people instead of posting in the hopes of, of course, sort of with the strategy of people finding you and then following along. I think that's a really helpful distinction to think about this as a very different way of marketing, but it's still a platform where you can do this type of thing. Do you know what your dream clients see when they come to your website? The only way to figure out how your dream clients are using your website and what makes them leave is to ask them. I've created a special UX test guide that you can get at lemonandthesea.com slash UX test. Inside, you'll learn how to structure a user experience test to get the best results, 18 questions to help you really see your website through their eyes, and my favorite way to find dream clients to help you. You need to look at every stage of your client's journey from landing on your website to completing the final goal through their eyes so that you know what to change right now to start converting more visitors into clients. Get the guide at lemonandthesea.com slash UX test. All right, so let's talk about what we need to get started if we want to generate leads and then create kind of a sales funnel on LinkedIn because that you know, you told us that's what we should be focusing on. How do we get started with that? Okay, that's a great question. So the first step is working on your LinkedIn personal page. Like when somebody's, when somebody sends you a connection, the first thing they see is that page. It's your personal page, not the business page and not your website. That's the first thing. Then we're going to drive them to our website. So we need to turn our LinkedIn profile into literally a sales funnel or what I call a one page website. And LinkedIn literally gives you, without doing any coding or design, literally gives you the places to plug in your content. It's like, hey, give me a cover page. Give me um, an elevator pitch as your headline. Give me a section where I can write the meat of what you are or who you work with. Let me highlight uh, your portfolio and your best case studies as the featured section. Tell us more about how you work with clients and your services. And it gives you all these options to plug in. Give me your recommendations, plug them in here, or go ask for recommendations. Like there's a section on LinkedIn that says, ask for recommendations. Like it literally gives you everything to turn that page into a sales <laughs> funnel without a website designer, without design, without any color, without any coding, right? So that's the first step. And a lot, you don't understand, the biggest mistake people do is they ignore it. They just have a boring, ugly cover page that says nothing, maybe just their logo. Uh, They write founder and CEO, which means nothing, barely anything in the about section and nothing. They just want people to just want to drive people to their website. But when you're connecting with people, that's the first impression, right? It's like in websites, when people land, their attention span is like three seconds. What's the first thing you work on? It's that thing that pops in the first thing on their website. And that's your LinkedIn profile in our case. And then 
Once that happens, then you need to actively be going and searching for your ideal clients using the powerful search engine of LinkedIn. Like I mentioned before, it's Google. Like, you know, when you write like, hey, chiropractor Barcelona, it's going to give you that list. You do the same thing on on LinkedIn, but even with more features. How long has he been a chiropractor? How big are his employees? You can even find how much sales they do if you're working with like Deloitte or these big companies. So once you start finding them, now you need to be actively adding them to your network and start having conversations with them. So these are, to me, the two main steps. And you just need to be doing this on a daily basis. All right. So we've talked about the personal page. Do you recommend people have a business page? Is that an, as important of a piece in the LinkedIn strategy? Yes. Yeah, so I do like to add it just so that I can leverage that. To, it's like adding authorities. I don't want people to go down to my experience and there's no icon and there's no business page because like, imagine you're like, you know, when you add yourself, you work at Google or something, Google has a business page. So you should have your business page, because eventually you want to look and and present yourself as a business. It's the same as having a website, right? Like you want to build authority using that. And eventually you'll be hiring people. So you should have a business page. But I don't want people to stress about, oh my God, should I be creating content for my business page and my profile? No, you should focus on creating content on your personal page, because that's what people see. The people that post on the business pages is Google and Dell and the investment companies because you follow these companies, so you want to see their news. For now, people are not going to be following your small business page. They're going to be following what you do because we are personal brands. Like if creative, you know, you are the business, we're the personal brand. So LinkedIn also works a lot on personal branding. Yeah. So you want to be posting on that, but you should create a business page for sure. Okay. That's really helpful. I know when I started to go in and update all of my stuff, I was, I thought that exact same thing. Do I post from my business page? Do I post from my personal page? What are people going to see? So it's really helpful to know you need that page, but it's not going to be where you spend the most majority of your time. Yeah. Like not, not to stress about it, but definitely have it present. Okay. So we have set up our personal page. We are starting to do those searches for people who are in our target market. Let's talk about building relationships. How are we connecting and building relationships with people so that we can actually generate sales from this? So let me tell you about how to think about using LinkedIn, because like everyone used to think about LinkedIn, it's corporate it's all my old colleagues. It's only if I want to get a job. It's not for me. I hate it. But we don't, as business owners, we can't be wasting time. We really need to be getting in front of our ideal clients. So when you're finding your ideal client and you start connecting with them, uh, one, you're getting in front of them. So ahead of your competition, because not a lot of people use it. So you're getting in front of your ideal client and you're like, Hey there, I exist. My business exists here. I am. And then we need to nurture that relationship. So the cool thing about LinkedIn is straightforward. When you send a connection request to someone, he literally has the option to accept or to ignore you. Literally, like, like it's not in your head. Okay, <laughs> I can literally ignore you. I don't want you in my network. But the person that accepts connecting with you, he basically pre-qualified himself. He's like, I see you, Samantha. I see what you do. And I know you're targeting me. I'm probably your ideal client. I know at some point you're going to pitch to me. But let's see how this relationship goes. And you never know. Maybe he was looking for someone. So when he accepts, he's adding you to your network. He's saying, okay, let's have a conversation. He's opening the door because this, this is what holds people back from using it. You know, people hide behind creating content. They're like, you know what? I'll create content and people will come to me. But in a business, in such a competitive business, we can't keep waiting for people to come to us. We have to also be actively looking for them. And with LinkedIn, when they accept, they're giving you permission to have that conversation. So now you can rest and be at ease. You're like, okay, they said yes. Now let's have a conversation. It's like if me and you met at a coffee place, you're like, oh, hey, so how long did you start your business? Okay, I really like your website. Can I give you some advice? You just have to treat the other person like another human being, the same way we interact with people on Instagram. But the sales cycle is shorter on LinkedIn because we are a business owner, he's a business owner, and we connected and he knows what I'm doing. 
So we, we can have a conversation, but not a sales conversation. You just need to also keep nurturing it. The same way we do it on Instagram, but at least you'll be at ease. And he kind of pre-qualified. He, he didn't, he didn't kind of, he did. Because they know people, how people use LinkedIn these days. So, and that's it. We just need to be top of mind. Maybe he doesn't want a website designer now, but you know who he's going to hire when he does want someone? It's Samantha that's been creating content, checking up on him, following him on Instagram, sent him an email, you know, was there, top of mind, right? Like that, that's how I ha- hired my copywriter. He did an excellent job. So that's how I like to think about it. So when you send that first connection, I know there's the option to kind of write something in there. How do you take advantage of that part to really build that from the very beginning and make sure that we are pre-qualifying people? That's a really good question. A lot of people make the mistake of not sending anything like that you answered because you, you, you seem to have some experience with using <laughs> LinkedIn. I never accept a LinkedIn request without a message. I'm like, who is he? Why is he adding me? How do I know him? Like, who are you? I'm on LinkedIn every day for three, four hours. So when I see a random connection with a person I don't know, with no common connection, I'm like, why is he adding me? But when we send a connection request with a goal, with like a personalized note, one, we took the effort to say, hey, with the first name. Second, where we added our goal, like, hey, I want to add you due to these reasons. You are in the same group. We have a common friend. I just want to grow my network. I want to grow my network of website designers. Hey, I'd love to connect with you. Maybe uh, we would work as referral partners. So a lot of referral-based partnerships. Uh, Hey, I want to create more podcasts. So I'm adding more people that complement each other. When you add that goal, it helps that person to increase the chances of accepting it or at least being transparent. Be like, hey, this is what I'm doing. Take it or leave it. And we don't care about the people that leave it. We care about the people that take it because these are the warm audience. That's a, that's a warm audience. When somebody follows you on Instagram, they're warm, but they're not that warm. They probably want you to follow them back and they're going to unfollow you in a couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> to me, that's it. But on LinkedIn, LinkedIn is it's business opportunities. I'm in Barcelona. I have a client in Dubai. I connected her with a photographer in London of a random person I met in London through LinkedIn, but I knew that they needed to connect because of a business opportunity. So it's, it's just really like an amazing platform for networking. That's how it also started. It's a networking platform at the same time. So definitely be using the personalized connection message. I, that's so helpful. And I think it. you mentioned that I have used LinkedIn. I have clients that use it. So I have seen the back end of their stuff, even though it is not my zone of genius. It's not very much of what I do, but I have kind of seen what they are doing there, (laughs) dabbled. Uh, And it is funny when you get those connections, it feels a little bit different if you're not used to it because people will start pitching you pretty early on. And we're not used to that if you're only on Instagram or Facebook. We're used to those long, drawn out conversations where you're just kind of responding to a reel or a story instead of getting into the sales more quickly. Yes. Now, the, the thing is, I'm drawn off and I don't do that. I used to do that when I first started my business because that's what we were taught, the masculine way of doing mm-hmm. sales, right? That's the masculine way that the, these seven figure, six coaches figure teach. But I ha- after doing it, I hated it. It's like cold pitching, like half cold pitching, which people still do, sadly. So I don't teach that to my clients. I don't do that anymore because I realize they don't work. But um I'm with you on the long drown out uh, conversations and I'm with you with that. But uh, the sales cycle happens to be faster on LinkedIn because many times they know what you're doing and they're added now into your funnel and, and now it's faster to convert them through different ways. That's why you need to be converting them faster and they're in a different mindset. And sometimes you could just connect with someone who's like, oh, this is so funny. I was just looking for someone. I never get that message on Instagram. And I don't know clients that do. Like on LinkedIn, it's just like, he's a business owner and I've hit them at the right place because I know my ideal clients and they just come to me. But the the lead time to me is almost the same like Instagram, but sale, but LinkedIn has a quicker sales cycle in some consequence, like in some situations. 
but I, I would never advise anyone to, to straight sell. It's very spammy and nobody likes that anymore. And that's yeah. why people also don't get on LinkedIn. Yeah. Fear of being like that. And that's what I'm trying to educate a lot of people. <laughs> that It doesn't need to be that way. There's a way you could use it. So if we are spending our time connecting with people, just genuinely trying to be helpful and stay top of mind, do you recommend that we then send them to our website or try to get them on a newsletter or connect in other ways so that we can get them into a sales funnel in that way? Yes, a thousand percent. Yes. Whenever um, I connect with someone, let's say I couldn't find somewhere to engage with, like I couldn't find... I couldn't give him advice on his website or his ads or something. After two, three weeks, I could do a poll and I can get his input on something. So that way I can re-engage with him again. I could say, hey, I just launched a contest or a free guide. Can I share it with you? I'm launching a new masterclass. Can I share it with you? So definitely, definitely take them. LinkedIn to me is one sales funnel. Website is a funnel. Instagram is a funnel, our freebie and lead magazine is a funnel. So if we can drive him to another funnel, yeah. And I also like to add them on LinkedIn, add them on Instagram. Like I said, we need to be top of mind because he's seeing so many other people that do website design and marketing consultancy. There's so many of us now, right? Now it's easier. Mm -hmm. There's no lower barriers to entry. So the key here is to obviously have amazing client experiences, amazing websites and look professional, but also to be top of mind you know, and, and really be helpful and sharing advice like, hey, you could do this on your website and increase your conversion by this. Can I share a quick tip? So he's, they're going to come to you because like you said, they, you took the time. So there are many different ways to keep re-engaging them and um, de definitely uh, getting them on your email nurture sequence is also one of them. Perfect. So can we just go back over real quick kind of that lead generation sales sequence that you send people through so that people can see it all together? So the first step is optimizing your LinkedIn profile, your personal LinkedIn profile. Optimize that. Second, search on LinkedIn in the search engine. So there's the free version and the paid version, which is called Sales Navigator, but you can do the free one. On the free version, you can look for your ideal client and the business owner you want. Send a personalized connection message with a purpose of why you're connecting. When they connect with you, thank them for connecting and start a conversation and try to find a conversation from within their profile, from their website, sharing advice, or just thank them for connecting, re-engage with them in a week and keep re-engaging with them till you get them into another funnel or get them hooked on an, a post that you shared or a poll or an email or a free masterclass. But it's consistency. A lot, I have so many clients, I give them all my free guides. They're like, Aliyah, I did it. I sent 10 connections, two people accepted. The others didn't reply back. Yeah, so there's 60 billion users on LinkedIn. <laughs> you need to be doing this consistently. It's the same with Instagram, right? Like it takes time to build our community and our followers. So you just follow the sales funnel and do it every single day. Lead generation is a numbers game. So do it consistently. Okay, I was going to ask, you know, how much time do you recommend people spend doing this? Because we're busy, so we don't have a ton of time. But what do you see people be who are successful using LinkedIn? How much time are they putting into it? Um, I would say to start off with an hour a day for the next 90 days. Because then the more you search for ideal client, the more you're connecting with them, the more you're seeing what they need, the more you're optimizing your LinkedIn profile, the more you're optimizing your outreach message, the more you're getting in front of your ideal clients and knowing, like honing that down, right? Because we are always working on who's our ideal client. But when you go on Instagram, you try to do that, like hashtag mom entrepreneur UK. That doesn't say anything about this ideal client. But when you find them on LinkedIn and you get in front of them and you can see more about them, like you can really help them, then you get more laser focus. So the more you do it, the better you get at it. And then you get more positive feedback and then you'll get encouraged to keep doing it. So I do one hour a day, honestly, but every single day. Like I've been doing it for the last two years, every single day. And I have now six, almost 7,000 connections. It's a warm 
pool of my ideal clients. And now I just keep adding more and engaging more. I put them in my funnel and, you know, I keep pushing them in different places. That's really helpful. And I love that you mentioned to stick with that for 90 days and really give it some time to work. I think we tend to jump on a strategy. We try it out for a week or two. It doesn't work right away. And then we abandon it. So we need to give these things time to really see if they're going to work for our business and to get used to doing it and figure out the best way. Yes, 100%. In marketing, it's all about consistency. Like reels take time to pick up and become viral, but they take time. Like, And if you gave up on them, you're already behind. And the same with anything. With Email marketing has 40% ROI, but it takes so much time to see that ROI, right? And if we only send two, three emails, that's not enough. You know, we need to get in front of our ideal client. What is it like five to 15 times before mm-hmm. they buy? So it's, it's the same with LinkedIn. We need to get in front of our ideal client and keep doing it for the next um, months. <laughs> All right. Do you have thoughts on using the paid versus the free version of LinkedIn? Yeah. Okay. So I definitely would opt in to use the paid version because it's honestly amazing. But before you should use the free version just to get started. Like in the free version, they do give you a couple of parameters, like where they located, what's the, uh, are they the founders, um, what industry are they in. So then you can look at those lists, right? It's like a directory. And then I want you to dabble with it, you know, like I don't want you to start paying. So once you start getting into the practice and habits, you really then hone in on who your ideal client is. And after a week or two, then you're ready to use the paid version. And the paid version is, is around $60 to $80 a month. And sometimes they have a lot of offers on LinkedIn. They give you like 50% off for the next two months. It's worth it because it's much less expensive than ads. And you cut your lead generation time instead of creating content all the time. That also is very time consuming. So definitely dabble with the free version for like 10 days and then do get the paid version. You do need the paid version. That's how you laser uh, in onto your ideal clients. Okay. That's really helpful. And I think comparing it to spending that money on ads is helpful because this is another way that you're generating leads. But in this way, you really know that you're targeting those right people, you're building the relationships, and you can see a higher conversion rate because the work that you're doing is actually going to a person instead of maybe showing up on somebody's feed. Yes. And, and, and people hate ads. They know it's an ad, right? Like it gives you sponsored ads, sponsored ad. I can hone in on Facebook ads and find parents who have five-year-old kids and like sell them a, a doll or something. But now cost of advertising and cost per click is much, much, much higher. And, uh, you have to keep repeating those ads. So Facebook keeps sucking in all that money. While on LinkedIn, you're paying $60 to $80 a month and targeting 500 to 600 ideal clients, super laser focused and saying, hey, I'm here. My business exists. Let's connect. And you never know. Someone's going to come and be like, yeah, that's what I've been looking for. Or they're going to refer you to someone or, you know, like you're really getting in there. And, and, and now he's in your warm pool versus Facebook ads. Facebook ads work when you're scaling, not when mm-hmm. you're starting, you know, like it's when you have a product, $47. And you want you have a five thousand dollar budget a month. That's when you do Facebook ads. You know, like scaling. Yeah, perfect. So you have mentioned a couple of mistakes, but are there big mistakes that you see business owners make when they're using LinkedIn? So the the I'll repeat them again just to keep it uh, organized. So the first biggest mistake is not having an optimized LinkedIn profile. Second one, not having a business page. Third one, straight selling to ideal clients like or not even straight selling, like sending a message directly to download your freebie without even connecting to someone. So using in-mail, that free in-mail credit from LinkedIn, please don't use it. It's those people that do cold emailing and cold pitching, they use it. So please don't use that at all. The the other biggest mistake is not doing it consistently. Honestly, my own clients, uh, like they pay me to help them. They're like, yeah, Ali, I did it for two weeks. I hate it. I don't like this platform. Can we move on to it? I'm like, no, you're going to stick to this platform. <laughs> it needs time. Like you need to, you won't see results in anything. Even in Facebook ads, you don't see results before two weeks. With LinkedIn, you need to stick to it. So that's another mistake to avoid. 
And that's about it, really. Like, if you do these steps and you avoid these mistakes, you're in a great place. It's, it's, it's a lead generation tool. It's meant for business opportunities and networking. Uh, you can create referral partners on it. Like, now, currently, I have referral partners. Like, let's say you and me, like, we have a, a client that might need LinkedIn services. So we're referring each other and getting incentivized for it. So you can use LinkedIn in so many different ways, but you have to do it consistently and to get started also. Thank you so much for sharing all this. I think the mindset shift around using this as kind of an outreach platform instead of a social media platform is really helpful when it comes to, to LinkedIn because it makes a difference in how we use it and how we can see success from it. Yes. All right. So as we wrap up today, I always like to ask people if you could recommend one thing to a friend, what would it be? Honestly, it's consistency because I've seen this with my clients and with many other clients that give up very easily because of shiny object syndrome, right? Like, okay, now we have reels. Okay, we're going to jump on reels. Okay, but now there's like uh, Clubhouse, right? Remember that whole thing Mm -hmm. about Clubhouse? People did it and now nobody talks about Clubhouse. I don't even know if it still exists. So we have to, when when we're part of a group program or masterminds or a course we just bought, so if you're not implementing the work that you just learned and paid for and not doing it consistently because of fear of failure or not success or not seeing results immediately, we end up jumping onto something new and then we do another thing and then we don't stick to it and then we do another thing and then we end up going into a negative pool comparing our successes to other because we weren't consistent first. Like some clients hire me, but everything that I've taught them, they don't end up doing it because they jumped into the other thing, fear of doing the work. So I've learned this from my own mistakes, from my clients and from what we see now in the online space, in marketing or in business. If uh, Microsoft gave up at the beginning or even Coke in the beginning and they weren't consistent in their business and sales, we wouldn't have Coke or Microsoft. But that's how a business goes. It's, we can't, this rich, quick, quick, rich scheme that people are throwing away online, it's, it's a marketing scheme. It's a fake MLM pyramid scheme. That doesn't exist. Business evolves and it's, 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 a, it's a long life cycle. And if you just stick into your lane and stay consistent with the strategy that you know works or you actually paid for, that will drive you to success. And uh, honestly, consistency in marketing, in sales, in whatever you do is what's going to separate you from uh, your competitors. So that would be my piece of advice. I love that piece of advice. We definitely tend to go for the new thing, hoping that it will bring us instant success. And it's about consistency in all things, in life, in business, anything we want to really accomplish. It's about being consistent. All right. So I know you have a freebie to share and I'd love for you to share that and where else people can connect with you online. Yes. So for everyone that wants to get started, I have a step-by-step free guide for beginners. I walk them through everything to optimize their LinkedIn profile because that is the first step to do. So I will share it with you. You will have it in mm-hmm. the show notes. Uh, and you can follow me on Instagram, marketing consultant Aliyah, A-L-I-A, very simple. Or let's connect on LinkedIn, Aliyah Khatib. And the guide will literally get you started. I also have like 10 conversation starters at the end of the PDF, just in case you're feeling stuck on what to say to your new connections. So I give you that just to get the ball rolling and to give you some ideas on how to send them outreach messages. So go ahead and download it. It's um, very, very helpful. I give everything away in it. So I'll send you the link in a bit. Perfect. I will add that to the show notes so people can check that out. I think it's going to be really helpful uh, to get all of that optimized and set up and the conversation starters are are super helpful too because I think that scares that's a what, lot of people <laughs> a lot of, exactly that's what, a lot of people get stuck there so I'm like you know what let me include that. <laughs> all right well thank you so much for coming on the show today I am excited for people to listen and give LinkedIn a try as part of their marketing and their lead generation thank you so much for having me I really enjoyed that conversation today thanks for listening to process to profitability 
please take a minute to leave an honest review in iTunes so that I can help more small business owners and creative entrepreneurs find the show.